Hey Canucks fans, after watching last night's game in person, I'm convinced that this team is for real. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram, I'm the founder of the GLCBC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Tuesday, January the 28th. And yes, I say this team is for real. I didn't say they're going to win the Stanley Cup, I didn't say they're going to win the President's Trophy, I didn't even, gonna, didn't even say that they're going to knock off the Blues in a seven game series, which I'll get to in a second, but... Look at where they are. They are now three points atop the Pacific Division. Now, actually, they've played a, a one more game than a couple teams, so it was weird. The Canucks have always had games in hand, but they're relatively equal still with a lot of teams. So three points above the Pacific Division, and they just beat the defending Stanley Cup champions, and they also, the, not only the defending Stanley Cup champions, but the St. Louis Blues, they also beat, in the St. Louis Blues, they beat the other division leader in the Western Conference. And we talked about how, you know, you got Washington and you have Boston and you have St. Louis, the top three in the league. And then you have, you have to scroll down to 12th or 13th place, 12th now for the Vancouver Canucks to find them. But it doesn't matter. They are top their division by three points and they just knocked off the Blues. It was a statement game. It was a benchmark game, whatever adjective you want to use. And the Canucks showed up to play. It was a bit of a sleepy start. I think both games were kind of easing into the season or this, the last third of the season after the All-Star break. And we know that they started, both teams started their backup goalie because both Bennington and Markstrom had big roles on in All-Star weekend, uh, uh, coincidentally in St. Louis. So it's not like Bennington had to travel far to get to the game. But neither, nevertheless, it was the two backup goalies and both played very well and Thatcher Demko stole the show obviously 36 saves first start of the game the only goal to beat him was he had no chance on it was a actually a, a bad giveaway uh, by Quinn Hughes thankfully he, he uh, had a good game for the rest of the game but a bad giveaway by Hughes where Hughes lost his stick took a penalty lost his man and then it was a centering pass and like I said Demko had no chance but otherwise Demko played outstanding he had an outstanding game the biggest reason why they were able to hang on to win in the third period and and and, and take the two points an important two points the Canucks two, top two lines played very well JT Miller with two points Jake uh, two goals Jake Vertanen with two assists Elias Pettersson with one assist and then the the second line combining on the empty net goal with Horvat um, uh, scoring that one from Erickson Chris Stanov quiet two assists for him nice to see and then third and fourth line, not so good. You know, a lot of talk about Besser. We, uh, I know we're going to talk about that a lot. We won't do that too much today. But Besser on the third line, not that effective. And the fourth line, although Jay Beagle got a lot of ice time, fourth line still gets caved in a lot. And that's what I really noticed last night. But St. Louis, a very tough team, a very good team. They're big. Oh, man, are they big. They're a big team. They're rough. They're aggressive. But the Canucks uh, met them check for check, block for shot for block shot. Another very impressive part of the Canucks game. And overall, the Canucks did not look out of their league at all. They looked like a division uh, leader, as did St. Louis. Now, as I got excited, as I watched the game, as I think, you know, the Canucks can certainly get out of the Pacific Division. If the playoffs started today, the Canucks would be the second seed. Obviously, they're not going to, they're still eight points behind St. Louis. So the Canucks would be the second seed. That means they would have to play against a stronger wild card team. And actually, before the game started last night, um, the, the team that was in seventh place was Arizona. So Arizona then stays in the division. So imagine Vancouver knocking off Arizona and then having to play Calgary or Edmonton in the second round. I'd take that. I'd definitely take that. So I think, well, I think you could argue for all five teams, but any team has a chance to come out of the Pacific unless you um, have to get uh, a Central Division team as your wild card uh, opponent. Then it gets a little trickier. But let's presume it's indeed four Pacific teams. I give the Canucks uh, as good a chance as anyone. Heck, they're leading the division right now. So I can see the Canucks getting to the third round. Now imagine if they have to play against St. Louis or Colorado in the third round. That's when it gets a little iffier. I'm not getting ahead of myself. I'm not saying they're guaranteed to make the conference final. But it is conceivable. It really is. So imagine Vancouver against St. Louis in a in a seven game series. I think it would be an awesome series. Finally, they could go against Bennington. It's kind of funny how I I think I talked about Bennington for three minutes yesterday in my vlog, only to find out that it was Jake Allen starting. That was poor research on my part. But yeah, I want the Canucks to um, play against uh, the Blues and and beat them in a seven game series. I just don't know how feasible that is right now. But maybe you know maybe, maybe they can beat them. They beat them two out of two out of three this this regular season. But I think they'd be tough games, and the Canucks would be pretty beat up by the end of that series. But that's okay. We have a lot of time to worry about that right now. We've got to worry about securing the playoff spot. And if it comes with a number one seed coming on the Pacific, second seed overall in the conference, that would be awesome. A couple other things I want to mention. I tweeted about this last night because I go home. I do rewatch the games, especially when the Canucks win. I usually don't do it when they lose. But when I go to a game 
and which I was last night. I was there with my my son Sean and and my uh, season ticket partner. So so Mike is my season ticket partner. We split the seats or have one seat each, and then the seats right next to us is my buddy Jens. And you see that you see that we do whenever we're together. About once a month, we do um, our our intermission reflections, and we have a lot of fun. We usually predict everything wrong, but last night we didn't. Actually, Jens, to his credit, nailed the score of three one. He predicted that after the second period, which is fine. But um, you know, he predicted that that third goal for the Canucks. So uh, it was that the game come home watch the rest of the game watch the game again usually the highlights or sometimes the whole game and I, I tweeted about this last night it's getting some attention because it was a really good play and I saw a couple people take snapshots of it pictures of it but then I actually posted the whole 13 second video there was a time when the Cucks had their late power play with about three minutes left and they were getting hemmed in their own zone so it's bad enough when you're getting hemmed in your own zone when you're on the power play and the St. Louis Blues only had four guys out there four skaters and the Canucks had five but the Canucks actually had six guys on the ice and they were still getting hemmed in so it speaks to how good the blues are and uh, you you can kind of see if you want to go to my twitter account you'll see that Pedersen is behind the net he's engaging in a puck battle he escapes from that that corner and then you see him actually looking around and you almost can picture him counting in his head wait a sec one two three four five I'm number six. You actually see him do this, and then he bolts to the bench, and which is kind of cool. Uh, you don't see him go onto the bench, but you see him exit the frame, and you know that he's, he's skating on the bench as fast as he can, so the Canucks don't get called with a too many men penalty. It was just, um, it was just a light moment. It was in, in consequential to the game, to the result, but uh, it, just another thing where it showed his brilliance. Uh, and you might say, well, Clay, why are you calling him brilliant? He can count to five. Still, to have the wherewithal to notice what was going on, and it probably didn't feel right. He was probably saying, why do I see so much blue? And none of the other Canucks players noticed it, maybe because they're all chasing the puck. So I'm not saying that they're not as smart as Pedersen, but it was just a nice, another uh, look into into the mind of Elias Pedersen. So it's kind of cool. So make sure you go to my Twitter account, at Canuck Clay, and check out the video. It's actually quite fascinating to watch if you just key in on Pedersen. It's, it's, it's a cool thing. Okay, one last thing I want to talk about. Um, I, I start off by saying this team is for real, and I do believe that they are, given that they're a top Pacific division, they have no signs, signs of slowing down. Slowing down, can't even say, say that. Uh, they've won 12 of the last 15, nine straight at home. Demko playing lights out, uh, all these things. I, I love how this sets up for the future. Yes, you can quibble about salary cap, maybe issues, and that we still have cap recapture penalty for Luongo, and you still have Spooner on the book somehow, and you know Sutter's making too much, and what are we gonna do about Furley? And why is Bester playing on the third line? There's uh, Jordy Ben can't get in the lineup, so there's a lot of uh, some of them good problems to have, but overall this team is for real, not just for this season, but we're setting up really well. We still have three years of JT Miller. We still have Horvat under contract, and then Pedersen and Hughes. I can't believe we have an all-star center and all-star D man. As long as we don't mess it up, we're gonna have these guys for a, a decade or more to come. So. I'm really, really excited about how this team projects for the future as well, not just for the season. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Uh, too ahead of ourselves. The Canucks have a pretty t a tough five-game road trip. They play in San Jose, 26th in the league, not so tough. But then they go Islanders, who are six overall. They have Carolina on Islanders on Saturday, Saturday, Carolina on Sunday, who are tenth overall. And then they play Boston on Tuesday or Wednesday. I can't remember one of those two next week. And Boston is is second overall. And then they wind up the road trip against Minnesota, who I think is about 20th overall. So on this five-game road trip, three of the games are against top 10 opponents. You have Islanders on Saturday, Carolina on Sunday, and then Boston sometime next week. So tough, tough games for the Vancouver Canucks. But they're in as good a spot as any to, to take some points from these games and to solidify their grasp uh, atop the Western, uh, the Pacific Division, I should say. Now, I don't expect all the other four teams, Calgary, Edmonton, Arizona, and Vegas to stay tied forever. So maybe we're going to start to see some separation. If I had to predict, I, I predict that Edmonton is going to drop uh, drop out of the race, but we shall see. I've been proven wrong many times before. But I don't care who's down below. I just care who's up top. And right now, it's the Vancouver Canucks. So, Canucks fans, let me know what you thought about last night's game. Uh, do you agree with me that the Canucks, that the time is now, this team is for real, and now is a good as, year as any to, to secure that the Pacific Division championship um, and, and that second seed in the playoffs? So that's number one. Do you agree with me that the Canucks, if they do make the playoffs, when they do make the playoffs, can escape the Pacific Division, can win the first two rounds? 
Um, do you agree with that? And do you agree that they would have a tough time against St. Louis? And, and how would you handicap their chances out of 100%? What percent chance would you give them of beating a St. Louis Blues team? i give it a 30-40% chance. Definitely not in the majority. Um, and the, the, the eight-point separation in, in, the, in the standings between the two teams kind of speaks to that. But the Canucks have to, uh, you know, beat them in the season series two games uh, to one. So a lot of cool things to talk about that way. Let me know what else you thought about the game. Demko's game, best on the third line, JT Miller coming to life. All these things, uh, Quinn Hughes recovering from his bad giveaway, all these things. Let's talk about it. And did you notice that whole uh, six man on the ice? And did you notice what I noticed with Pedersen? And, and what do you think of that play? Or do you think I'm putting too much stock into one play, uh, innocuous play in your own zone? Anyways, let me know. Oh, and of course, Louis Erickson. Everyone's so excited when he almost hit the empty net. Just missed it by a couple feet, but he still assisted unselfishly on Horvat's empty net goal. So a lot to talk about. Let me know what you think. Canucks uh, optional skate today, I believe. And then they start their five-game road trip tomorrow by playing against the San Jose Sharks. So let me know what your thoughts on the Canucks. Let me know how you're feeling. Leave a comment below. I love to read, react, and reply. Subscribe if you like to like this video, if you like to enjoy the day. God bless. Go Canucks, go.